Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 44 female, have two children with my ex, 46, both 10 male. He cheated on me with his then affair partner, and they had two children, five female and six male, who he ended up marrying. Despite all this, me and my ex decided to be civil to one another for the kids' sake. We had an agreement that I have the kids during the weekdays, and he had them on the weekends. It worked reasonably well. He would often bring his other children when he would come to pick up our sons. They were good kids. His wife hardly spoke to me, but she was civil and she was good to my children, which was good enough for me. Last year, his wife died suddenly. My ex went into depression. My sons were worried about their siblings, so I spoke to my ex and he said they were fine. My sons asked if they could have their siblings stay over, and after asking my ex, he was okay with it. This started happening often, and it gave my ex time to get help with his depression. When I felt he was doing better, I started encouraging him to be with his children more, as I did notice his children were getting attached to me, which he did. But his children kept asking for their siblings and wanting to come back to my house. My ex suggested we take them out on weekends together, which now that I think about, shouldn't have agreed to. Now I got a job offer with better pay, decided to take it, but it would mean I had to move to the other side of the country. I told my sons and they said they will miss their siblings and dad, but were excited about the move and change. They told my ex and he got very upset with me and rang me and said I can't take his sons away. I said we can come visit when I visit my parents, but he wasn't listening and said his kids are going to be upset. I said I'm sorry about that, but he will have to deal with it. He called me cruel and heartless and then hung up on me. That same day his parents called me and said I was selfish to take away the boys and that ex's other kids need a mother figure in their life. I told them I wasn't their mother, and they said they had been watching me with them, and said I was doing everything a mother does for children. Then they threatened to take me to court for the boys if I go. Since then, I've had his family text and ring me saying I was selfish and cruel, and I need to step up. I feel so guilty. Am I the a-hole? Edit. I'm not in the USA. Also, English is not my native language. I only started learning it nine months ago. So, if I made mistakes, thank you for pointing them out, as I'm trying my best to learn all the proper grammar and spelling. I see that many are asking how I'm legally able to move without my ex's permission. It's because I have full custody. Him seeing them on the weekends was something we agreed to outside of court. So, legally, I can move without his permission. His parents threatened to take me to court to try to get back custody. Well, OP's ex's parents don't run OP's life. He needs to accept it. OP's life isn't on hold for him. Those other two kids are not OP's problem. It's nice of OP to do what she's done. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Enthusiasm's Low 3388 says, Not sure, but can you legally take your kids across the country and away from their father? Is your parenting agreement for your two kids part of the divorce settlement? Boo Boo 97 says, Not the a-hole for wanting a better job opportunity, but you absolutely need to get family court involved to adjust a current custody order, if there is one or to get a new one put in place. If your ex has any brains at all, he's already got a lawyer and is preparing to file for custody. You don't just get to unilaterally decide to move your kids across the country. Your ex has rights, and if your family is in the same area, then it's very likely he'd get custody since he'll have a support network already in place. I have a 26-year-old son named Dylan. He was married to Miranda for five years. I only have sons, so I consider Miranda a daughter. She was a perfect wife, funny, respectful, and she cared for Dylan. However, a little over a year ago, Miranda came crying to me that Dylan was cheating on her with a girl from high school. And the worst part was that Miranda was five months pregnant with twins. I told her to file for divorce because I wished I had when my first husband had cheated on me. She immediately found a lawyer and started the divorce. Dylan acted like he didn't care but refused to sign the papers until his father forced him to. He quickly moved on with Lily, the girl from high school. I disliked her instantly. She did D, did nothing but laid around, and is a jerk to everyone, but hides it as bluntness. It was my granddaughter's first birthday, and Dylan came with Lily and Miranda came with Landon, her new boyfriend. One reason Dylan said he cheated was because Miranda was getting fat. 
So between the split custody, Miranda went to the gym and not only did she lose the baby weight, she got into really good shape. Landon was her trainer and they've been dating for about seven months. He's a sweet guy who's a better man than my son. Lily scoffed and talked bad about Miranda wearing a crop top as a mother. I overheard her and told Lily that Miranda is young, fit, and only 25, so it suits her. Lily went to go tell my son that I called her fat. He didn't want any troubles, so he just brushed it off. He also was staring at Landon all day. My oldest son told me that he isn't happy with Lily, but has to stay with her to prove a point. But here's where things really take a turn. My niece and Miranda are best friends. So when she tried to get Miranda to have a drink, Miranda denied. So my niece screamed that she must be pregnant as a joke. But the face Miranda made, everyone knew it was true. So we start congratulating her. Then we hear my son scream, you got to be ducking kidding me. Everyone stopped and stared at him. And instead of backing down, my son continued to yell about how she doesn't even know that guy and that she's really throwing everything away for two minutes of fun. While he was screaming, Lily came up and punched Miranda. So my niece handled her and Lily ended up going to jail. The party was cut short. But after everyone left, my husband and I found my son balled up on the couch crying. My husband grabbed him by his collar and said he brought this mess upon himself and crying about it now shows he's nothing but a coward. He tried to explain that he knew he ruined everything but thought he had time for a second chance. I said to him in the harshest tone that he was a piece of crap who I'm embarrassed to call a son. So he's getting everything he asked for. I then told him to get the duck out of my house and don't come back until Miranda accepts his apology. My three oldest sons heard what I told him. The two oldest agree with what I said, but said that I could have told him that in a nicer way. My youngest said he was already at his lowest and shouldn't have said anything at all. I also heard that since Miranda decided to press charges, Lily is stuck in jail because my son refuses to pay her bail. Am I the a-hole? Necessary shock says, I think your son needed to hear it. Was it an a-hole thing to say? Yes, but again, he needed to hear it. Why would he think he had a second chance when he was still with Lily? That kind of says he wasn't really interested in trying to get a second chance. Not that he deserves it. I think he was just mad that Miranda moved on and didn't sit around waiting for him to come back. Infamous Cup says, So he thought he still had a chance with his ex while still being with his new crazy girlfriend who decided that punching a pregnant lady was a good idea? Doesn't sound like he loves his ex. It sounds like he doesn't want her to be happier than him and so he threw a fit. He needed to be told straight. He and his girlfriend made a scene and then acted like victims in a situation they had a hand in. Maybe if he hits rock bottom, he'll finally grow up and start climbing his way out of the hole he keeps digging. Not the a-hole. OK Coyote says, Not the a-hole. Obviously you didn't have to go to that degree, but also I understand it was a heated moment, and in those times we often say harsh words. But you're 100% valid. Even though he's your kid, it doesn't mean you should support such unacceptable behavior, and as someone who loves him, you need to be blunt and honest. You stood your ground and told him to his face his behavior is unacceptable. Nothing wrong with that. So glad Miranda has an ex-mother-in-law like you who supports her. Since I met my husband, he has always gifted me expensive things. My husband has a job that pays him a good amount of money. Over the years, I would tell him that he doesn't have to keep buying me expensive gifts because we both have expenses such as a mortgage and other bills. I also gift him expensive presents that I save up to buy him. A few weeks ago, we welcomed a beautiful baby boy. My husband a few weeks ago before I had him gave me a push gift. It was a huge Gucci bag and inside was a Gucci tote bag. It was a very lovely bag. He said that the reason he got me that big huge Gucci tote bag was because I would need a big bag to carry around so that I could put the baby's things inside when I travel with him. I gave my husband a huge hug and I thanked him. The gift to me was too much, but he kept insisting that he appreciates me and is excited for this journey we will both experience, and that he saw how miserable I was mentally and emotionally during my pregnancy. The next day while my husband was at work, I took the bag out of the box to place it on a shelf next to my other bags. As I held the bag, something felt off. I noticed that the material of the bag was different. The inside of the bag looked a little off, and the handles of the bag felt like very bad quality to the point where if I placed too many things in the bag, I'm sure it would tear. The bag also smelled different. It didn't smell like leather to me. I quickly went to the Gucci website and looked for the bag. The bag is on there, but as I compared both bags, 
I came to the conclusion that the bag was fake. I still tried to give him the benefit of the doubt by looking for an older version, but everything still points to the bag being fake. I began to wonder why he would buy me a fake bag. He didn't have to get me anything expensive. I made that very clear to him many times. Later that night when he came home, I asked him where did he buy the bag at. At first, he said the actual Gucci store. I kept asking him if he was sure a couple of times. He then told me no, it was eBay. He said he got it for a good deal. I quickly told him the bag was fake and that he should try and get his money back. He angrily said he was offended and that eBay authenticated the bag and how dare I call the bag fake. I showed him the pictures and he just got even more mad and called me ungrateful. I even compared it to another Gucci bag that I have and showed him how the material is different. I also explained to him that if he paid a lot of money for the bag thinking it was real, then he got scammed and should get a refund. He paused for a second and took the bag. He keeps calling me ungrateful. So am I the a-hole because I keep questioning if the bag is fake? Well, the worst part of this story in my opinion is that OP's husband lied to her, lied in her face and didn't even feel ashamed. That's really not good. I don't know if OP's husband really got scammed or if he bought knowing it's a fake and tried to pass it as genuine, but he got angry because OP called him on it and he was embarrassed. I personally would rather get a Walmart bag than a fake bag. Buying or wearing fake is really not good. If you can't afford it, don't touch it. And now let's see the community's opinion. Royally Oki says, Not the a-hole. You were obviously more worried about your husband getting ripped off than you were about receiving an authentic bag. Hopefully your husband will calm down and see you are simply concerned, not ungrateful. Forward Squirrel says, Not the a-hole. If he got it from eBay and it was authenticated, he should have received papers stating that. Sounds like either he knew it was fake and is upset you caught him in a lie, or didn't know and is embarrassed about getting scammed. Either way, it was reasonable for you to question him about it once you realized it was fake. Because either he lied to you, or he needs to get his money back. If he lied to you, why should you be grateful? If he got scammed, he should be grateful that you noticed right away so he can try to get his money back. I, male 31, own a franchise coffee shop, which I also manage. I have a university degree, but no interest in pursuing a career in what I studied. I'm not living off my parents' money. I'm living off money for my great-great-grandfather. I bought the coffee shop because I liked working in one when I was in college, and I like providing a good place for people to work where they're not expected to put up with any crap from customers. I was dating a woman I met through friends. She is in banking, and she does very well for herself. She is beautiful and smart probably smarter than me. She knows I have a college degree and that I am the manager of a coffee shop. She said it didn't bug her, but then it did. She said that she needed someone with a future and not someone who was squandering his education as a barista. My family never discusses money with people. It gets awkward. We also don't splash it around, but none of us really need to work or get educated really. My little brother always joked about just buying a villa when he got his trust fund and laying in bed while sturdy women rolled him around with kayak paddles so he didn't get bed sores. He got his teaching degree and is happy as an elementary school teacher. Anyway, she broke up with me because she didn't see a future where she was the breadwinner and I stayed at home with the kids. I said I understood and let her go without much of an argument. Then, about 18 months later, I met a woman at work. She is a regular and she is perfect. She is a law student. She started late after serving in the military. We're getting married this summer. I invited my friends, obviously, and it got back to my ex that I was getting married. She texted me to congratulate me and ask if I was registered anywhere. I told her that I appreciated her congratulations, but that if she wanted to gift us anything, she could donate to the SPCA in our name, since we didn't really need anything. She said I should swallow my pride and just accept a gift from an old friend. I told her that anything she chose to give us would be welcome and that we would be thankful. I guess she went to my friends and found the registry. She texted me again and said that my registry was ridiculous and that I was greedy asking for such expensive stuff. I told her that my mom had done the registry and that if she wanted, she could just put money towards one of the gifts. A week later, she came by the coffee shop and had a printout of some stuff. She asked to talk to me privately, so I took a break and sat down with her. She had printed out screenshots of my registry with most of the expensive gifts already taken. She asked me who was buying all of this stuff. I said it was just friends and family. Then she pulled out a bio of my grandmother who she had met when she was visiting Florida. She asked if it was the same woman. I said yes, but please don't go telling people about my family. She kind of lost it. 
She said that she thought she was wasting her time with me, waiting for me to quit my job and actually get a real one. I told her that I didn't want to pay someone else to manage my shop and go be miserable doing something I didn't love, just to get money I didn't really need. Now she is pissed that I cosplay as a poor slacker to float through life, and that she would have been happy to let me live my life the way I was as long as she knew I could contribute as much as she was to the relationship. While we were together, I paid for everything. Nights out, dinners, gifts, even our trip to Florida. I guess she thought I was maxing myself out to impress her. I never even thought of it, really. My credit cards are set for full automatic payment every month. She told our mutual friends about my family, and they are conflicted. Some knew, but were polite and didn't say anything. Some are pissed because they felt guilty when we would go out and we would split the bill. I guess they too thought that I was just flashing my barista tips to fit in with the group. Some also think that I should have told her that I'm a trustafarian before I let her break up with me. Am I the a-hole? I'm just speechless at the fact she's an ex, yet she felt the need to print out the registry list and berate OP about it. She's a gold digger who missed a golden ticket. And any friends who start acting weird now that they know the truth aren't really OP's friends either. Looks like OP dodged a bullet. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Tasty Donut says, Not the a-hole. I can see that she wanted to be with someone that would be putting equal into the relationship. I think that's fair enough. But if she did think you were maxing yourself out on credit cards, why not say something? But then contacting you just reeks of she thought she was the best thing you were ever going to get and wanted to buy you the most expensive thing on the list to feel good about herself and then saw these expensive gifts. Then she became a gold digger because she couldn't leave it and said she would have stayed with you had she known. I think your instincts knew she wasn't the right person for you, and that's why you never told her about your money. Panda Lennon says, Not the a-hole. She not only sounds like a gold digger, but the fact that she dug to find out more about your financial situation way after you split up and are engaged is pretty crazy to be honest. Definitely dodged a bullet. But congrats, and good luck on the marriage. Sugar Eyes Me says, Not the a-hole. Gold digger is mad that she missed her jackpot.